Hi, I'm Alicia Main. I help animals heal their behavior, health, and end-of-life issues naturally. And I assist them in helping their humans heal their hearts. I am the animal healer. Oh, and did I mention, I'm not usually in the room, state, or country that they're located in when we do our sessions. Join me weekly for Animal Healer TV Live as we explore quantum reality and learn just what's possible in helping animals and humans heal their behaviors, health, and hearts through the quantum energy field. Hey, it's Alicia Main, the Animal Healer, and I am so excited for today's episode. We are with Melissa Courtney of DogHappy.com, and we're going to be working with her dog, Emmy. And there's also a couple of other dogs in the room, so we're not exactly sure who's going to communicate, who's, we know we're going to work with Emmy, but we'll see also too what what happens with everybody else. So Melissa, thank you so much for joining me. And I'm would you excited. share with us a little bit about Dog Happy? Oh, sure. Thank you very much. Dog Happy is an interactive podcast. So we have a podcast. Our goal is just happier, healthier dogs, one interview at a time. Really anything that can bring um, happiness and um, peace and training and just to kind of enrich pet parents' lives and their dogs is uh, what my focus is. So thank you. Thank you. So we're going to work with your golden retriever, Emmy. What do we want to look at today? She's been having some trouble breathing. She has rapid breathing and it seems like she can't quite take a deep breath. She'll do some yawning. She's always had a problem not being able to cool down, but in, I think it was May timeframe, we really noticed, so, you know, we're home with COVID, so we're playing with her more. And we thought that the reason she was breathing like that was because she was playing more often and we knew she had trouble cooling down, but her breathing was seriously rapid. There's also been some structural issues. So she's had to see a chiropractor um, and also receive cold laser therapy to be able to play. So I would expect this kind of need at maybe 10, 11, 12, but not at six. You know, the chiropractic and the, and the cold laser really work really well. And um, when I had read what you did and um, I was thinking, you know, this might be that little, that little bit extra that can kind of get in there and uh, um, figure out either what's wrong or kind of reset her to where she should be. All right, perfect. Let's flip the camera and let's go to Emmy. Alrighty. Let's do it this way. I'm going to do an in sync body assessment first. And as I'm doing that, I think Emmy and I will just naturally start talking. Um, okay. Because the thing that I just get from her, I asked her, are you in pain? She said, sometimes I am. And I said, what is it that I can really assist you with? And she said, could you just get me out of pain and kind of get me back to normal? So I'm like, I will do my best, girlfriend. I will do my best. So the way I do the assessment, I've got one thumb on each side of it's well, I'll start at the top of her head because I'm actually going to check the bones in the top of her head. And then I'm going to go every inch and a half down her spine. And I'm going to be checking the back alarm points as defined by Chinese medicine. And those also correlate with all of her um, vertebrae. So let's see what she shares with us. All right. So off the bat, um, the left side of the bone in the top of her head is pitching under the right side a little bit. So I'm going to start kind of like about by her eyebrows, like her eyebrow points. <laughs> I just put my fingers there and she was like, okay, I'll just relax. I'm like, okay. Aww. She Girl. is too. <laughs> yeah. Do you see her eyes? So I do. And it's just so funny because as soon as, like I was talking about putting my fingers there, but that like they were actually going there and she just went, okay, no problem. Okay. So I'm kind of like uh, about here on her head. And I'm getting those 
plates to move properly, giving them some fluidity and some flexibility to get them back aligned so that their cerebral spinal fluid can flow. And this is also to where I sense you might be having the issue with, yeah, it's overheating, but it feels like it's a big panting problem is what it feels like. And Melissa also to feel free at any time to, you know, jump in, tell me what you're seeing, what you're noticing. Um, you're very well aware of energy as well. So if you notice anything shifting. Well, she's would... definitely just sat up and is not and panting nice and high. I, so, um, now like I'm I look further back, like kind of in the middle part of her head. So I'm getting to that part where the one side is pitched under the other. Right now I'm on her occiput. Gonna move wherever she needs to move, which is fine. Emmy, go wherever you want. I'm just gonna follow you. So her left occiput is really jammed forward. Her right occiput is pulled back. So I'm just opening that for her. Should I let her move yeah. around? She can totally move around. I'm still on that left occiput, bringing it backwards. And like, let, I mean, that's why I like doing this work. It's like, let them have the freedom. I don't know where they need to move. I don't know what they need to do. I just know that I'm working on, there she goes. So that occiput is going back in place. So that was a beautiful yawn. The left one is still a little tighter than the right. Okay, so C2 is a little stuck. It's a little stuck on the right side. Okay, all right, so now C2 is open on the right. We're just gonna open it a little more on the left. So what'll start to shift now is Emmy's starting to drop into her nervous system because the cerebral spinal fluid is starting to flow, get a better flow up there. Mm -hmm. So we haven't gotten the deep breath yet, which is fine, but at least we're opening all of those spaces um, where she's tight so that we can get her into a better position to take a deep breath. Perfect. Cool. All right, now we're going to go to T1. And I guess all these places that she was out would also be part of the reason it's so hard for her to run and, and absolutely. All, all right, T3. T3 is definitely stuck. It's like it's almost like it heased a little bit in the center. So I'm opening that for her on both sides. And more than anything, honestly, it just feels like the fascia has gotten very tight and restrictive. But this should open it up and loosen it up. Okay, so T5 is opening. You can see her eyes starting to close. She's starting to drop in even more. T6. T6 is high on the right, a little bit low on the left. She's not as out as you think. Um, she's just that fascia has gotten like restrictive. Let's put it that way. And the fascia is the um, coating on top of the muscles between the muscles and the skin, right? So it almost, it Kinda almost- like saran wrap, you know what I mean? Like it holds everything in and then you like the skin and then the fur. Now I can get restrictive to the muscles, but I'm still on T6, but it could also get restrictive to the cerebral spinal flow. But a lot of the cerebral spinal flow being restricted also has to do with how the structure is. Like that's why I go down vertebrae by vertebrae. I'm not a chiropractor. I just energetically, I'm just tapping in with those points and I'm just releasing where the muscles are tight that looks like it's throwing the structure off a of place so that they get relief, everything gets realigned and the cerebral spinal fluid really has like a beautiful um, pathway 
to re regain its like full capacity um, all the way up and down the body. All right, so T7 is the big one for her. I'm not sure if she had an injury, if she banged into something, but it is where she feels like she lost her breath. It, it literally feels like her breath is stuck in the inner cavity of her body correlating to the T7 vertebrae. So T7 is still opening. All right, now we're gonna go to T8. Ooh, T8's really restricted. Yeah, there we go, babe. So T7 was kind of stuck, T8 is really stuck. And that's like pulled in and compressed. Okay, girl, you can get up. So if you take your dog to the chiropractor and they're adjusting her in pretty much, you know, I mean, where we're talking about vertebrae, they're, they're adjusting those. So even if you get them adjusted, they can still be out on a deeper, more energetic level in the in those areas? It, it depends on the chiropractor. So certain, I don't adjust bones. I'll tell you the position of the bones, but I'm releasing muscle tension, right? Okay. That is affecting like fascia and like the bone can't move unless there is some sort of um, injury, like a blunt force injury or the muscles get tight. It's really right. the only ways that the bones can move out of place. Okay. So she feels it's like, oh my goodness, girl. I feel like it would, there was some kind of like a crash. <laughs> now, and I don't mean like a car crash or anything, but it's like, I feel like she collided with something. Oh, she collides with a lot of things. Yep. And it's just, just like, and that like T8 just kind of went into spasm. So this is I don't know what the chiropractor found, but um, this is, yeah, it's just deeper and more energetic because I'm basically working inside of her body right now. Now we're going to get into her lumbar. Ooh, okay, so lumbar one's really off. It's like eight o'clock to 12 o'clock and then one o'clock to like five o'clock. It's just, it's just rotating that way. So I'm just going to. I can tell you that I have suspected that even with the adjustment, even with the laser, that she's still out in that, in that area. So I wasn't surprised that you said that because of um, the fact that she kind of nibbles on her toes and, and mm -hmm. she's licking herself. And at first I thought it was maybe she had a bladder infection or something like that, but the other day it occurred to me that it's probably, you know, like when your fingers go numb and mm -hmm. the way they take yep. care of that, you know, we would shake our hand. She's going to lick her, her, that area, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised that the lumbar region is out. Okay. It's interesting, right? Picking that up because this is the first time I'm even seeing this dog. Yeah. I've never seen her before. So I have no prior knowledge whatsoever. But now we're actually getting at not just an adjustment, but the things that create the offage to begin with, which are the muscles and the fascia. Like now what we're doing is releasing the energetic imprint of those that have been telling the body to, you know, sort of almost like turn the steering wheel to the right at L1. And I'm saying, nope, you guys, you got to release all of that muscle tension and you've got to allow that to reset. So right, right now, L4, there's still, there's a little bit of a pinching of a nerve on the right side. So I'm just releasing the restriction on that. And you can see her breath is doing different. It's like making waves a little bit. Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of uh, uh, jiggly a little. Yeah. Exactly. So that's starting to open and take the tension off of the right side of L4, which has got a little bit of nerve compression. And getting... oh. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I'm working on her L5 right now, and he oh. actually, ha his leg was tremoring because his L5 is also opening. 
Oh, good. Thanks. Good for him. Did yeah. you hear her snoring? <laughs> I did. <You're> out. <laughs> oh, but that's good. Emmy, you can go out again. It's okay, girl. She that goofball is going to kick me in the nose. <laughs> All right, so L5 is opening. Okay, now I'm on L6. So L6 isn't necessarily technically out of whack, but it's tight. And you can see like where she's going for the licking. Yep. She's not done that on any vertebrae before. So I'm opening and we got, I think we got another deep breath coming somewhere soon. Right, but she's stretching, like she's even stretching her front paws and she's like, oh, yeah, thank you. Well, look, her yes. breath is. Uh... Yeah. And sometimes too, before a release, you will see a panting. There we go. She might, I don't know if she's gonna yawn or not yet. I don't know which vertebrae it's gonna be, but I do know that all of this is massively opening for her and the fascia is becoming looser was tight for her there you go ems go for it it's okay it's all opening oof there it goes it just kind of like all the tension released so that's l6 right l7 l7's off l7 is pushed forward high right so it's pressing of a nerve on the left at l7 and she you see she went back to like licking her feet yeah she is nibbling right where right where i was wondering if that was a there we go so l7 got like the tension on it released so now it's not compressing on the nerve which is often where we'll see like blood flow restriction and then like what you said, right? You could see that numbness could happen or you get a sensation that she feels a numbness. That was happening in L7. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to her shoulders. So there's a little restriction in there, kind of like from left to right. I feel like she pushes out on the left side and she's a little compressed on the right. So I'm just gonna open all that up. She felt like her body was pushing from left to right. So her right side is, wasn't doing as much. It almost feels like a little bit of a dent in the car. So I'm just expanding her shoulders back out. And now we're gonna go with her hips. So her right hip is rolled forward. Her left hip is rolled a little bit back. He's all stretching. Like, <laughs> he cracks me up. We're getting our hips back in place. Just releasing the muscle tension, creating what's holding the hips out of place. She looks good. She does, she looks like she's, she's moving great. Yeah, she looks actually like she's really happy. Oh. Oh, look, go girl. Go girl. You stretch yourself out. Mr. P. I know. Graham and her uh, hyoid, I pulled all of that, like, have come back down into place. Apparently, you're helping him, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, she okay, she now she's got in up. healing grid. Good girl. All right, so she's gonna stay in this healing grid for about 36 hours. So it's just gonna keep feeding her body. <laughs> Good girl. Aw. This is gonna keep feeding her body and, and um, telling her muscles, you know, it's okay, we can stay open, we can stay open, we don't have to reverse. And I'm but, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, cut me off anytime. Yeah, she looks like a puppy. She does. She's being so silly. Thanks for watching today's episode of Animal Healer TV. We hope you enjoyed it. 
We love to hear your feedback on what you learned about yourselves and your animals. We'd also love to hear what issues are you dealing with that you'd most like to see on the show. If you'd like to participate in an episode, please see the link below and share with us the issues that you're having with your animals. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and Insta and please feel free to share with your friends. Join us next week for another episode of Animal Healer TV where we will explore quantum reality and see what else is possible in helping animals and humans heal their behaviors, their health, and each other's hearts.